the dirtiness of it, of, of political payoffs and jobs uh, to attack minorities, it, it, that is so cruel. Yeah, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, and when, you know who ends up winning on these kinds of fights, because when these bills or these policies are enacted, then, and then you know, the, the advocacy groups hire the legal best legal teams in the country, and then they light them up, and then the governor's office is then fighting an illegal industry battle versus them, and the only people who benefit is the legal industry. They only benefit from when the Republicans and the Democrats fight each other. And, you know, and this is a big issue out there in this world. It, we, 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 the taxpayer, is the one who loses every time this happens. And, and it's about time that we wake up as taxpayers and want to say, why don't we have a more balanced legislature in some of these extreme states so that that way we don't have to worry about fighting all these legal battles down the line. Think about how much money that's going to save our state, your state wherever you're watching, if we stop having all these BS culture war legal battles, it's going to, it's a big issue. And on that, we have a, a, a gigantic case coming up uh, in, later this year in front of the U S Supreme court out of uh, Tennessee, the Scrimetti case, which is going to make a determination on what the standard of review is on these bans for gender affirming care and whether, um, being trans is something that is worthy of being protected. We've had we've had uh, circuit courts basically say that being trans is there, there's nothing to being trans. Trans people don't really exist. They they don't deserve equal protection of the law. They they uh, and so that is coming up before the U.S. Supreme Court. So hopefully that is going to give us some definitive answers as far as what. Uh, what they can and can't do and whether they have to have just a, a rational basis for, for doing it uh, or whether they, there is some heightened scrutiny, whether there has to be a compelling state interest of some kind or there has to be uh, a, a, a basis more than just we don't like trans people, which is what they're getting away with right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that makes me think of the Amy Stevens uh, ruling uh, which, you know, of course, gave us the, the groundbreaking uh, ruling uh, for the protection for, for transgender workers um, and that people couldn't be fired for being trans. So that was a Supreme, Supreme Court ruling um, as well. So, uh, you know, that that happens. And um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we get that same type of decision out of Gorsuch uh, and maybe another justice or two. Uh, I am going to go back and watch that that argument when it happens, uh, yeah. uh, being a member of the Supreme Court bar. I think it's important that we have trans individuals in the courtroom when they're arguing this so that they can see who this affects. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it's um, yeah, it's a big issue. I mean, um, you know, this is this is another reason why these these local elections really matter. Right. I mean, like, obviously, hey, representation at the state level um, can, can help us to protect us long-term, uh, around these decisions. Um, you know, obviously Supreme court is one piece of our, of our governmental three governmental branches on the federal level. But a lot of people don't realize this, that the states also have their own rights. And, and this is a big thing for Donald Trump, right? He's all proud about, Oh, well, let me throw it back to the States. Like that's his ultimate catch all thing that he tries to do because he knows there are more red States than blue States. And then once again, it's it's bordering a supermajority as well in that scenario. Um, and and I challenge people who are watching this also to uh, Google Article 5 of the United States Constitution. If you want to know why state house races are just as important as to who your Supreme Court justice is, that my race for the state house of representatives is just equally as important as that. Go ahead and Google Article 5 of the United States Constitution and then come and argue with me as to whether or not it's not important or not. Because I can tell you right now that the states that operate in this gray area, purple area, um, it, it, it's a huge opportunity to protect civil liberties for people who live in America. Because if we get too many red, red states, which is literally the Republican Party's goal surrounding all these anti anti-everybody bills. It's to scare people and get them to all move to New York, California, or Chicago, right? Because if they can condense us all to three states, 
they can then have that super majority across the states as well. And, and this is really important. People don't talk about this at all. And that's one of the pe- reasons why I moved back to Nebraska is because I needed to go into where that was being done and fight back on that. Uh, yeah. And so on, on a more personal level, uh, and one of the first podcasts I did was the candidate for uh, district attorney here in Los Angeles. And one of the things that I thought was really cute was he got his his daughter involved in the campaign and doing that. You have two kids. Are they involved at all in your campaign? Um, a little bit. Yeah. So my oldest is a freshman in in college. And so he's really focusing mostly on his uh, college experience and he's supportive of me. Uh, but he's really, you know, focusing on that. And then my youngest is, is definitely passionate about our campaign. He's helping wherever he can. Uh, both of them have attended events for the campaign as well. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, my, my youngest also works about 30 hours a week too. So, my kids are kind of like fully emblazed and in, in kind of cultivating and growing their own lives too. So I'm trying to be respective of that as well at the same time uh, as, you know, happy whenever they do want to come and be involved in something. And, and really, this is one of the reasons why I was comfortable to say yes to running was because, you know, in that moment, I, I, I knew that, uh, you know, that I wasn't going to be, you know, putting them in harm's way because they're, you know, they're doing their own thing now, which is, also equally cool. Yeah, that, that that was one of the concerns I had in looking at running is, is my children are very private. They they don't necessarily want to be, you know, known. And, uh, and I was certainly afraid to a certain extent that, that they would get drug into it. And, and so uh, that's something I, I'm still, if any future potential run, I've, I've got to consider on that. But uh, the fact that they're they're very supportive of you, and it sounds like you are instilling into them the same work ethic that you develop by by going out on your own at seventeen. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's so important that we you know share the positives, but we also educate around the issues. You know, this is this is a big thing from our discussion, right? Is that we can't ignore the things that that maybe weren't great. We have to also talk about that. We have to use those as teachable moments. This is how we get better as a society is we bring people together, right? I always say empowering differences, right? It's an opportunity for us to give authority and power to connect it to other people. And every time we have an opportunity to, you know, change someone's perspective, I'm not going to move someone who's, you know, a full-blown Trumper who doesn't want me to have any rights. I'm not going to move that person really to going voting for me, right? And I know that's not going to happen, okay? But certainly I know that, I can talk to that person and have a conversation with them and be civil and, and maybe potentially I can get them to move to maybe not actively campaign against me, <laughs> you know, and, and that's a win in my book. Okay. Um, you know, and, and, and then I know that, that they realize that I'm an actual person and that I'm going to do some really great, great stuff when I get elected. You know, that's, that's the issue here it is going this right back to the main issues you know, and, and I think that another thing, too, uh, I know that uh, I guess we're getting low on time. So uh, but I, I think it's also important that people if you're watching the podcast and you're trying to think, what can I do to get involved or how can I help Ashley? Uh, yeah, you can <laughs> uh, from anywhere in the United States of America. Uh, if you're over 18, uh, you can donate <laughs> at AshleyBrundage.com. That's a good place to start there. Uh, there, you can find me on Act Blue. Uh, you can just type my name in on Act Blue. You'll see our, you see, you will see us come up on the on the radar there. Uh, but also, if maybe you don't have any financial resources, you could also uh, go to AshleyBrunage.com and click the Volunteer tab, and you can actually sign up to make calls for us from anywhere in the United States of America. You can help us to fundraise. You can help us to call voters. You can help us to register voters. You could help us to request mail-in ballots because Ron DeSantis canceled every single mail-in ballot on purpose so that, that way people wouldn't have an easy path to getting to vote and, and adding more obstacles to voting. You know, this is part of why he, he's done this kind of stuff. And, and we're going to be passionate about this race. It's so important that we get people involved. 
And I'm pretty sure that we're going to have down in the comment section uh, a link to your website so that they will be, we'll make it easy for people to, to help you out. I have donated to Ashley and I'm going to donate some of my time to make some calls for her. Uh, and so it's very important that when we have candidates who are viable, who stand a chance of winning, that we support them all that we can, because yeah. it's so rare that we, we get people into positions where they can make a difference and yeah. getting Ashley into Tallahassee and getting her to, to face up to all of those people who want to do harm to our community is going to be something that she is going to be able to help change minds in Tallahassee. Yeah. Now it may not happen overnight and it probably won't happen overnight. And we may end up with situations like we, we ended up with Zoe Zephyr in Montana where they, they purposefully uh, change the rules to, you know, um, marginalize us and, and, and prohibit us. But we make change. We make yeah. differences.